Hey everybody, welcome back. If this is your first time visiting my channel, please go ahead, click on subscribe, and also click on the bell to receive all the updates on my channel. So for today's project, we're gonna be walking through the process of what you need to what you need to do to install a set of LED headlights and fog lights into your Jeep Wrangler. This is a 2013 Unlimited Sport uh, JK. Um, this is this process will apply whether you have a four door or a two door. So I'm gonna show you everything that you need to do to do this correctly, to do the wiring correctly, so you don't have any issues with it. So with that being said, why don't we go over to the bench, I'll show you what we bought, and I'll show you what you're gonna need as far as supplies to get this done and to get done correctly. Okay, so for the uh, headlights and fog lights, what we're doing is we're using the SunPi 7 LED headlights with fog lights. This is a direct copy. Uh, the JW speaker uh, style, but it's significantly cheaper. Um, so what you need to do to, ins to install this is you're gonna need a multimeter, you're gonna need some wiring as far as what color you want to choose. That's completely up to you. We have black, red, and green. Uh, you're gonna use some uh, protective wire loom. You're gonna need a fuse tap. You're gonna need uh, heat shrinkable buck connectors. You're gonna need shrink wrap. You're gonna need wire strippers and a crimper. So that's pretty much all you're gonna need to do this. So with that being said, why don't we go ahead to the over to the Jeep and start taking things apart. All right, so the first step in the process is you need to remove the grill. Removing the grill is pretty straightforward. There's a bunch of push pins. And if you look at the push pins, it's a two part assembly. There's a bottom and the top. And essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop the top out. And essentially once you do that, that will release the pressure on the bottom and then they'll come out. Okay, with the, uh, the push pins removed, what you're gonna do is you need to pull the uh, the grill off the front of the, the Jeep. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab it from both sides, right? And then comes right off. And then just twist the, the marker lights out. And now the grill is ready to come out. All right, so the next thing you want to do before you even pop the headlights out, we're still in the part of uh, disassembly because um, we are replacing the fogs too. If you're not doing the fogs, you can skip it uh, further in the video. But essentially what we're going to do is, um, we're actually going to be re replacing this bumper, but what we need to do is um, we also need to get this, uh, this uh, tray out or whatever you want to call it. And there's a way to get these push pins out. You know, some people will just drill through them and then they destroy them. That's not the way to do it. Um, the easy way to do it is you're gonna take a screw, you're gonna go into the center of it, right? And then we're gonna use a slide hammer to pull those out. Um, you don't have to drill these out to do this. All you need to do is think a little bit smarter. So I'm gonna show you what, what we're gonna do and uh, we'll pop them out. Okay, so this is what we did. I just essentially just took a drywall screw I drilled it, I screwed it into about a quarter inch of that uh, of that fastener. Then I attached it to a slide hammer, gave it a quick yank, and it, it popped right out. Okay, so now we're underneath the Jeep. We're gonna take off the uh, plastic air dam so we have better access to the fog lights as well as the hardware holding the bumper on. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna use a trim removal tool. These push pins work in the same fashion as the other ones. Essentially, it's a two-part assembly. Uh, there's a top and a bottom. All you want to do is you slide your uh, tool underneath it, pop it, and it comes right out just like that. Again, you don't need to destroy these to get them out. All you need is the right tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around the, uh, the entire air deflector. We're going to take all the push pins out. All right, so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the hardware to take the bumper off. What you want to do is you want to spray them down with some penetrant. These are 18 millimeter nuts. So go ahead and use a uh, six point socket on those. These are the two on the outside on the passenger. There's the other two on the other side for the passenger side. Kind of hard to get a camera in there, but they are there. So go ahead and remove the eight, eight nuts and uh, the bumper will slide right off. Okay, so the bumper that we're putting on is actually just, a, it's another Jeep bumper, but it's a bumper from an Oscar Mike where the, uh, the, uh, 
The center sections are uh, color coded to the, uh, the grill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop in the, uh, the fog lights. And one, one thing I've noticed right away, um, so those are the factory Jeep headlights, I'm sorry, fog lights. There's an adjustment screw on the right hand side for both of them. And then there's an alignment uh, hole that allows you to adjust the fog light up and down. So looking at the, uh, the kit from SunPie, um, what, there's a left and then there's a right, but the problem is the one on the right, um, or however way you want to look at it, it's not, there's not going to be an access hole for the adjustment. So what we're, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to drill a hole through the bumper to provide access to that adjustment screw. Alright, so I went ahead and uh, just used a uh, step bit to drill the hole for the access for the uh, fog light for the adjustment. And do yourself a favor, if you are going to do this, go ahead and spray that bumper with some paint because you are going to have a, an exposed edge. So you do not want that to rust out. So the uh, fog lights are installed at this point. So what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about the wiring. Right, so now we're going to talk about the wiring of the fog lights. So probably this is going to be the, uh, this is going to be the biggest challenge as far as wiring. Um, for the uh, for the install of this kit, because for whatever reason, even though this fog light is designed to fit the bumper of the Jeep, um, they did not include the proper type of uh, connection as far as the body style that would correspond with the uh, connector on the Jeep. So they gave you this this pigtail, which you gotta splice in. So the uh, per the uh, the uh, schematic on the drawing. Blue is ground and brown is hot. And then you have another yellow wire coming off um, <clears throat> by itself. Why they include this in the, uh, the Molex, I'm not sure, but the yellow wire is for the, for the halo of the fogs. So there's a couple different ways you can wire this. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire in the halos of the fogs to be on at the same time as the halos on the headlights. If you don't want to do that, if you just want to have the, uh, the the halos come on at the same time as the fogs, all you do is you would just take the yellow wire and connect it with the uh, the brown wire of the pigtail, and then once the fog lights are energized, the halos are going to come on. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk over to the Jeep and we're going to discuss a couple options of how uh, to integrate the pigtail in with the uh, the, uh, the the wiring from the Jeep. All right, so we're back at the uh, the Jeep. So what we're, what we're looking at is this is the uh, the harness for the fog light. White is 12 volts, black is ground. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, and I I'm not gonna basically throw away that plug because again I don't know if we're gonna have issues down the road um, w with this kit. So what, I, what we're going to do is we're going to retain that plug, but we're also going to integrate that one uh, from, the, uh, from the LED kit into it. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going uh, to take a couple buck connectors. We're going to stagger the cuts on the white and black. We're going to put basically one further back and the other one a little bit further up. And the reason why we're going to do that is so we can essentially get everything back in the wire loom and still have that protected. And uh, so what we're gonna do is, essentially we're gonna have the dongle from the LED present as well as a new one. So in the event that something happens with this kit, we can easily roll back and put the factory fogs in. So again, I'm not willing to essentially throw away the original factory wiring. In the event that we uh, uh, we need to roll back, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do my connections on this, and it'll make more sense once we're all set. All right, so we have the right, well, the driver's side done, and so essentially what I've done is I've taken the black and the white, I cut them, and I've essentially I spliced in the original harness using the buck connectors. So we, we end up having two connectors. So in the event that we need to roll back to the original 
um, lighting from the Jeep, we can certainly do that without having to uh, do this all over again. So these uh, connectors are essentially they're they're crimp on style, but they're also um, heat shrink. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a heat gun and basically seal these down to make them watertight, and then we're gonna tuck them back into the existing wire loom. Okay, so everything's put back together. Everything's back in the wire loom. Take some electrical tape and just bind up the uh, the wire loom, make it as watertight as you can. Um, take some electrical tape and just wrap up the existing factory connector so it does is not exposed to any elements. And then use your multimeter. Go ahead and turn on the fog lights and check for the presence of 12 volts. If you're good at this point, it's time to move on to the passenger side. And essentially we're just gonna do the exact same thing as we did on the uh, driver's side. Okay, so I temporarily placed a bumper back on the Jeep and made the uh, connects for the fogs and I've turned them on. And at this point we're looking pretty good. Um, you wanna check your work as you go along, make sure that uh, we're not missing anything. And, but at this point we're looking, we're looking pretty good. So we're gonna remove the bumper and then uh, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna uh, wire up the, uh, the halos for the uh, fog. Okay, so for essentially wiring up the halos, what you need to do is you're gonna take the two yellow leads coming off the harness and you're gonna join them together using a uh, buck connector, right? So we've taken the buck connector, we're running a jumper wire between the two, and then we're joining them back together. So at this point, there's gonna be another wire coming out uh, that's gonna be going to the 12 volt source. And once, you know, at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on some uh, wire loom to make this nice and neat and make it look good. All right, so at this point, the wiring for the fogs are all done. Um, we got the uh, loom on there, it's fully dressed, everything's uh, taped in and everything looks good. We got the 12 volt power lead cut to a long length. We'll uh, get that connected once we get the bumper back on. All right, so at this point, the bumper is back on, it's probably mounted. We got our uh, 12 volt power lead hanging out there for the uh, halos on the fogs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the, uh, the existing factory headlights. They're just held on by three screws. There's one there, one there, and then there's one below. They're T15 on, on both sides. So why don't we go ahead and, and uh, pop those out now. All right, so now with the headlights removed, essentially what you wanna do is take a piece of flex loom and go behind the headlight, fish it down, all right? It's gonna pop right out. There's nothing really Prohibiting it from uh, blocking it from coming down, and pretty, it's pretty easy. So what you want to do then is take your 12 volt power source, tape it over, you know, and then uh, fish it, you know, essentially start it from this side and you're gonna essentially push it all the way through and then keep pushing and then it'll eventually come out. So that's why you want to tape it and it'll help uh, the, uh, the wire to go through that flex room pretty easily. So at this point, we're gonna leave this here, and what we're gonna do now is gonna go to the headlights, and we're gonna essentially do the same thing for the halos for the headlights. We're gonna make a jumper between the two headlights and to connect the, uh, the 12 volt power source as required for the halo. Okay, so on the headlights themselves, you have two wires coming out of the, uh, the headlight. You have a green wire and a red one. The red one is for the halos, the green is for the turn signals. If you want to use the halo as a amber turn signal, I'm omitting that. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use the halos. So I've essentially, I put a, uh, a buck connector on one side, on both of them. And then I'll, let's walk over to the Jeep to show you what we've done to prep it. All right, so what we're going to do as far as powering up the halos, we're going to use an unused fuse slot in the uh, in the fuse box that's located underneath the hood, where you use uh, position M9, and the way to check for voltage on it before you start anything is you're gonna put the key into the run position. You're gonna take a meter, and what you do is you're gonna put one lead on the uh, one side of the uh, the load. You're gonna touch the other side to ground, and we have 12 volts. So that's what we're looking for. And what happens is. This position is only hot with the key in the on position. So as soon as the Jeep is running, 
the halo is going to be powered up 12 volts and they'll be essentially your daytime running lights so we're back at the jeep we're looking at the driver's side so what we've done is we've run a piece of flex loom we'll talk about that first there's a piece of flex loom running through the headlight and then it's going against the, the existing wire loom across the radiator and the, uh, the flex loom comes out on the passenger side headlight through that flex loom we are running a piece of wire that's essentially that's a jumper wire to the halo okay that's ready for the uh essentially the other side of the butt connector that we've already put on the, the headlight and so back at the passenger side this is where we're making all the connections so if you remember we have the uh the existing uh, lead from the uh from the halos that green wire right there that's coming out from the bottom there's the red wire coming from the driver's side and then there's a uh, there's the other end of the buck connector going to that headlight to join that one together and then on the opposite side is the actually 12 volt power source right that's going to the power tap and the fuse blocks fuse box so essentially that is running right there it's coming across I drilled a hole through the um, the plastic it's tied into the uh, M9 that we've already discussed close that and it's nice and tight what we'll do is we'll just seal this up with a little, little dab of silicone to make it watertight so we don't have to worry about water and essentially that's it as far as the wiring so what we're gonna do now at this point we're just gonna button all everything up we're gonna make it nice and neat and then we're gonna insert the headlights into the buckets. Right, so at this point we're all set the job is done and you know what the uh, when, whenever you do electrical um, you really need to take your time and do it right because electrical is one of those things if you do a shoddy job it's gonna come back to you uh, pretty quickly and you're gonna start chasing issues and everything else and um, you know a lot of this stuff can be eliminated when you're doing the install Take your time, get the right materials, know what you need to do, and you know just make sure you're doing the right thing. You know, have everything in in wire loom. Make sure everything is crimped correctly. Test all your connections. Make sure you know everything is watertight as far as your connectors. You know, you can get regular buck connectors, but the ones I use they are shrink wrap. Um, and essentially, once you apply heat to them, they shrink and they close around the wire make them watertight so you now all these little things that you do makes for a better job so when you're doing electrical take your time buy the right materials and your job will be better off for it so um if you like the video please go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you have any questions as far as what i did go ahead and leave them in the comments box there will be a link in the description of this video to uh out on amazon as far as what i bought and, uh, and I'll also link everything I bought as far as all the supplies and everything else. Um, again, if there's any questions, thoughts, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.